good morning, 5.30 Central, 5.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, February 5th, 2021. We have Fundador Solera. from Pedro Domecq, Jerez de Frontera, Spain, introduced in 1874. It's got this uh, embossed shield in the glass and the paper label goes around it. It's a knight with a shield, uh, two hands, two fists, no, a fist and an open hand and a sword. I don't know what all that means. All right, imported, bottled in Spain and imported, product of Spain, okay. Now, they're saying that the uh, distilling company was established in 1730, but the fundador, the founder, brand, started 1874 so the, they have all these signs up at the distillery 1730 1730 all right solera reserva there's many 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 that they make this shows a barrel on a barrel stand it's too blurry because too up close but uh and it says 1730 on there Brandy of, looks like Jerez, Spain, but they pronounce it Jerez, but Jerez. Um, the competitor is the Booze Review. Cool, another live stream to watch. Oh, thank you. I'll open the shades in a little bit. It's still dark outside. There wouldn't be no light yet. Martel. Get the glare off of it. Blue Swift. The bird. Martel goes back to 17, 15, 15 years older than the uh, Pedro Domecq company. Cognac VSOP, -V -O very smooth old pale. That's the uh, second level grade of cognac or brandy, cognac brandy. VS would be a basic three star. Um, age about two years. VSOP, very smooth opal, be about four year aged. And then the XO, extra old, is about six, but that can vary. There's no there's no set. I think in the United States, it's a legal, legal thing. Two years, at least four years, at least six years, at least. But um, it's kind of like a general guideline. What is the time where you are? It's 5.34 a.m. 5.34 a.m. on the Gulf Coast of the United States. So Martel, Eau de V, Eau de V, de Vin. These were like two for 11 or something. Cheaper than that. I don't know. These are cheap. The normal price you're going to pay for this is high. Now the Pedro Domecq, Funded door would be about sixteen dollars. I got it for thirteen, and of course Savannah discount. <laughs> Let's see what total wine's got the blue swift going for. I know Mathurin's has it. Seems like some people buy it occasionally. The manager there told me they don't sell too much uh, brandy though. The only brandy they sell that moves that moves pretty regularly and, and pretty strongly is the Hennessy. All right. So they, they move Hennessy pretty regularly. Cognac. Brand. The other brandies, I guess Corvassier does okay, but the rest just trickle out, kind of trickle out. Walmart sells a lot of um, <clears throat> Hennessy, of course, but Walmart also sells a lot of uh, Palmasan brandy. I noticed. So it seems to be a lot of turnover there. 
let's see, Martel, I think it's about $25, Blue Swift. I want to see the price for a seven fifty, a fifth, as they used to call them, fifth of a gallon. Oh, I'm thinking of the regular Martel. It's $38.99, and Total Wine's got it cheaper than anybody, so we Finished in bourbon barrels or bourbon casks. They call them casks in Europe. You say barrels. Martel Blue Swift it has a white label now. It used to have a blue label when it first came out. Good morning again for another Dawn Busters. Yes, Dark Lotus. Good morning. All right. You would assume that the uh, Martel's going to win. It's $39 a bottle. This is 16 but uh, <laughs> didn't happen yesterday. The Martel VS, very nice product. But uh, the price did not justify the compet. You know, its ability to beat the competitor. I mean, it was they're good. They're both good. That was the problem. But the Pedro Domecq, you know, the the Fundador. Sixteen dollars. The other one is thirty-two. Well, I'm I'm gonna let you pay the thirty-two, and I'm gonna pay the sixteen, and I'm gonna get a product that's just as good. I didn't see any inferiority in it at all. You say, well, cognac gets commands a higher price just because it's called cognac, and people get into that. They're impressed by that, thinking that it's better than just regular old brandy. Yes, I agree with that. When they see cognac, they'll say, uh, oh, yeah, it's better, you know, but it may not be any better. Um, maybe worse. I might have enough for another taste challenge. It's getting kind of getting kind of shaky here on this. Uh, yeah. I think I have enough. <laughs> but it's not it's not too promising. Um Look how dark. So you got eight, four years in a used bourbon barrel. Would it actually get that dark? I don't know. That's pretty dark brown, mahogany. Maybe that's chestnut. I don't know a lot about colors. You say, well, what about Robert Duvall and Sean Penn? You don't know a lot about color. I'm just telling you, I don't know a lot about colors. Or, or froggy or... You see the guy standing in, you see he's dusted. You know, I don't know about all of these things. I know about limited things, limited things. Much lighter, less age. No age statement on either one because for a Solera, if you study what Solera sherry and uh, cognac is, uh, brandy, you can't have an age because, well, you certainly can't have, well, you could have an age statement, but you couldn't really. And you certainly couldn't have a vintage. Well, because Solera, they have all these barrels on a rack, like a, like a hill, you know, it's like an incline, like a 45 degree angle rack. And it might have, I don't know, 10 of them. And they got the one at the top and they dump it in the one at the bottom. And then they let it age for us and they dump that one. They dump that one. Now you see those been aging various numbers of years. And then they get to the bottom and they finish, but they might add different years to those barrels. So it's very blended, <laughs> blended. And it could be, I was reading about it. it could be a hundred year old brandy the other barrel might have a one-year-old brandy. You see, so it, it 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 you can't hardly even track it. They can, I mean, but I don't know if they always do. But they they say that um, in their opinion, some people think no, but their opinion it makes a richer, better uh, brandy. All right, so there's the fundador, and there's the blue swift martel. So thirty-nine dollars versus sixteen. It's going to take a lot of fighting and battling for the $39 one to beat the $16 because I find that the, the Fundador Solera is really nice. Is it world-class or fantastic or anything like that? Like, 
outstanding. I wouldn't go that far. But I've probably never had a world-class brandy. I mean, you know, uh, go to the liquor store around New Orleans. They got brandies. That's five, six thousand dollars. Uh, a bottle. I haven't had those. So how would I know? So those could be a different experience. I don't know. I cannot comment to that effect. There's got to be a reason they charging thirty nine hundred dollars for the uh, Louis the Thirteenth over at Dorgnax thirty nine ninety five. Um. So brandy's like whiskey, in the sense that it's a distilled product aged in barrels. Whiskey's made from grain. Brandy's made from wine. Grapes that they make into wine and then they make into brandy. Usually they use white grapes, clear. You know, the, the green, you know, the green skin grapes, white, um, white wine. You don't have to use white wine. Don't have to use grapes. You can make brandy out of oranges. You can make brandy out of apples. Um, but uh, it's also like whiskey in the sense that you can buy a bottle of brandy that's Pure grape, not fortified with grain spirits. They got some really questionable ones out there. It's like they got grain alcohol added to it. Oh, can you imagine? Saw it at Total Wine, too. They got no shame. Um, but you could buy pure grape, you know, traditional brandy, like Hartley. Saw that at Total uh, Savannah discount for $7.99. Of course, when Dixie had it yesterday for $8.99. When Dixie's always higher which might be why I don't ever go to Winn-Dixie and buy anything, uh, basically. Um, $7.99, made with Italian brandy. They use American brandy, I would imagine, and mixing it with Italian. Hartley, been on the market since 1934 or 38, I know in the 30s. Ooh, uh, no, you know what, I'm wrong, 1943 or 44. It's kind of a strange time for Hartley Brandy to have been introduced. Might have something to do with the United States invasion of Italy in 1943. Now it could have something to do with that. Because the United States had already occupied big parts of Italy by the fall of 1943, big areas of Italy. So Could have, could an American named Hartley started, could he have started a, or she have started a brandy company in Italy during the war? Well, I don't see why not. Okay. All right. But uh, that is some low grade stuff. I mean, that's the low, low. So you can go, you can go to one liquor store and go from seven ninety nine a bottle to four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents a bottle. You would hope, pray, and obviously expect the other one, the the high hat, to be much better. But I don't know. I never did it, so. Burley says, you, Dark Lotus said, I thought when dixie was a disposable cup brand. No, you're thinking of Dixie cups. What this grocery store I keep hearing about must be a Southern thing. Yeah, when dixie when it was a cut, it was a merger of Win Grocery Store and Dixie Grocery, Win dixie Now it's owned by Southeastern Grocers, who also owns Jitney Jungle, another East, you know, Atlantic Coast, Southern Atlantic Coast chain. But I think they're selling all the Jitney Jungles off to um, another chain. The headquarters in Jacksonville, Florida. So if you go, if you go anywhere in Florida, basically, all the way to Louisiana, I don't think they have them in Texas anymore. I don't think they ever really did. Maybe one or two stores. But you see Win Dixie all around. Now, is it in Tennessee? I, I don't recall ever seeing it in Tennessee. So it's just those southern. It may be in Georgia, which Atlantic Coast State, but they're they're here. There's one right there. I can almost see the parking lot from my window here. 
you know, they got them in Metairie, New Orleans, and, uh, but they high, they high. Now they got good deals on, on some things and they have very good meat. That's their calling card, the beef people. They sell a lot of good high grade beef, uh, but um, they're probably not gonna make it in the long term. A lot of smaller companies uh, just struggle. You got Walmart out there selling groceries now and that really hurt all these other people. Didn't hurt me. They got a lot of good grocery products in Walmart. Okay. I can't look, you see, because I'm a, if I see the lighter one, I'm going to know it's the, the fun the door. Four locos for morning, Ron. No, James Frias said, no, 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 no. Now, the big up and coming chain in Florida, I guess you call it, been around a long time, but it's like the hot with all the new stores, all clean and new, exciting and new is Publix, P U B L I X, starting to creep into Alabama. But you see, a lot of these stores, it could be deceptive because you think it's so successful, but they could be very heavily leveraged. In other words, they could have bought, they have, they might have a debt load that's incredible. And um, I think grocery chain, grocery stores in general, their profit margin is thin. So they could go from profitable to dying in like literally months. So you gotta, you know, you gotta keep your eye on that. I remember national national grocery chain around here in Louisiana it was very big and then it just collapsed. Schwegman's bought it. Schwegman's was huge, but then Schwegman, he spent so much money buying national, he couldn't pay the debt load. So he, he went under about what, about five years later, 1999, 22 years ago. A&P Atlantic and Pacific, they're basically dead. They had the oldest A&P grocery store in the United States. That's the oldest grocery chain, them and uh, Piggly Wiggly, <laughs> right there in New Orleans in the French Quarter on Royal Street. A&P was opened in 1927. Sure was. But uh, I think Rouse's owns that store now. Is it hard seltzer beer or malt liquor? What, for loco? Well, they make the seltzer version and they make the uh, flavored beer version, strong beer version. Jeep and Foodie says, Sedalia used to have old grocery chains decades ago. Kroger to consumers and Safeway to superfood. Bam. Yeah, it's the same old story. In Texas, it's all Brookshire and uh, H-E-B, especially H-E-B. I wouldn't mind working at a grocery store, but I sure wouldn't want to own one. You'd be, you'd have gray hair and you'd look old fast. Cause it's, it's, it's a rough, and I wouldn't want to be a manager at one. You'd be old fast. Cause it's a lot of pressure, pressure. Whoa. Mm. The aroma here, uh, they're both pungent and you smell a lot of wood. So I don't know how you feel about that. Remember the uh, Blue Swift is aged in old bourbon barrels. No, it's not aged in bourbon barrels. It's finished in bourbon barrels. You understand the, the last few weeks or months, maybe just weeks, they're finishing it off in bourbon barrels. So that's supposed to add some little character to it. You say, oh no, that's just a gimmick. I know that. I know that it's all gimmicks. <laughs> I don't care because I didn't pay much for it. Okay, and it tastes good, so I don't care. But I like gimmicks. Three D, three D glasses. You know, I don't want. I don't mind gimmicks. Tell you the truth, I'm into gimmickry. Yeah. This one smells a little less fancy though, and I don't mean expensive wise. I just mean like busy, busy in the nose. This one's more busy in the nose and I'm picking up definitely a bread yeast. You say bread yeast, you're going crazy. I ain't going crazy. I'm just picking it up. Hmm, makes you wonder. And it smells like cognac soaked 
wood. Is there any difference between cognac and brandy? The answer, no. <laughs> nope, no difference. It's just brandy that's made in cognac, France. There you go. It's like people telling me all day long, talking about, you know, malt liquor is different from beer. I say, oh, it is? Explain to me how. But they never can explain how because there is no difference. Kroger dominates in the Midwest. Yeah, Kroger and Publix in Nashville. Okay. Kroger is, uh, I've seen it up there in Chicago area. It's even in Southwest Louisiana, I believe. You know, like along the Texas border, just a few miles in. Top of the morning, Jade. Same to you, Tommy. Tommy, what's up? <laughs> um, that tastes a very grapey. You mean like the Four loco Sour Grape? Uh, well, yeah, you know, really more like authentic grapes. But really grape skins, you know, the tannic thing has some tea-like qualities. Very nice, smooth. I like brandy more than whiskey, I think, because whiskey, they have that strong grain. It's like cereal grain. It'd be too loud. Oh, I mean, I taste whiskey all the time. I got some rye whiskey taste challenges coming up. Already recorded a, a rye whiskey uh, solo video. And it was very good. But I mean, I think in this life, we do have the right to have a preference. One food over another, one drink over another. Some people don't agree. They have a totalitarian mindset. And they'll say definitively things like, whiskey's better than brandy. Everyone knows that. And I say, really? Sounds like you're stating opinions as fact. Then it, then it goes and turns into this big old hoopla. But that person's knee deep in the hoopla because I, I, I never felt comfortable with people stating opinions as fact. And I'm always careful not to do that. I'll say something like, well, I thought this beer was fantastic. Or it's a fabulous product, in my opinion, and so on. Not definitive, subjective statements stated as objective reality. No, nope, sorry. Uh, there's a little wood here. Um, I'll tell you what, it's close. Close, close, close. You say, well, Spain and France are close. I couldn't think of the mountains yesterday. The Pyrenees Mountains, Pyrenees. Run from the Mediterranean west to the Atlantic. Bay of Biscay, still part of the Atlantic. Uh, that's right. France and Spain are very close. They share a border. And there's a little tiny country in between those two in the middle of the mountains called Andorra. You say, I ain't never even heard of Andorra. Yes, very old country. Small, too. I think Rhode Island would be big compared to it. I think I have to look at a, a, the stats. I, it's not big. It's not big. I think the official name of the country is the Valleys of Andorra. Do they produce liquor there? Wine, beer. I'd like to find out, wouldn't you? Be interesting, wouldn't it? So Spain and France are close. Since they next to each other. These two brandies are very close. In flavor but they're not close in price. $39 is a lot more than 16. I would not pay $23 more for the Blue Swift. 
cognac brandy. No disparagement against it. I'm not ripping it, talking bad about it. It's a fine product. I'd recommend it. If you want to pay $39, go buy it. On the other hand, this one that flies under the radar, this Fundador Solera, which you're not going to see at most liquor stores, from my experience. Everybody got Blue Swift. Uh, Martell, you know, most everybody. But, uh, ooh, it's a real good substitute. In some ways, in some ways, it has more flavor. Okay, the difference from malt liquor versus beer, regular beer tends to be more hoppy and less alcohol. Well, that you're using the general understanding of malt liquor. But malt liquor is one of those nebulous terms. It really doesn't mean anything. It's just a name that was brought back from the 1700s, 1600s, 1500s. To, and they just used it. It was an alternate term for beer. Liquor made out of malt. Malt liquor. You know, very low alcohol liquor generally. But uh, in the 1940s, the United States still had very strict. We still do today but he was even more ridiculously strict in the 1940s for alcohol, beer, especially. And some companies wanted to make strong beer like in Canada and England and Denmark. The US government said, oh no, you can't sell strong beer. Mm -mm. Can't be over 5%, and even 5% is pushing it, pushing it. But you see the US government wanted that tax revenue off of the strong beer. So how could they get around the prohibition against strong beer? Now, could it have been a case where the U.S. government advised certain beer companies that, that even though it was prohibited to sell beer above 5%, There was no actual prohibition against selling malt liquor above five. Now, it makes you wonder, did they suggest this to these potential beer companies that had maybe gone to the government asking, could they do it? Or was it a case where they just tried it out? They made strong beer, called it malt liquor. It passed muster. They didn't do anything to them. Oh, well, well, well. Whatever the case, it started hitting the market in the late 40s, and now we have it today. Uh, in Europe and in Canada, part of the British Commonwealth, the Bahamas, Bermuda Islands, Cayman Islands, British Virgin Islands, etc., Belize, British Honduras, but they didn't have a rule like that. You could sell strong beer, just sell it on the shelf. Strong beer, 12%, 10%. You got it, man. No problem. But in the land of the free, ha ha ha, ah, 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 in the land of the free, couldn't do it. So they had malt liquor. Now you say that sounds like some kind of semantic game. You got it. It is a game. A thorough and total game. So the term has no meaning. It just is a generally accepted that it's a higher strength beer. That's all it is. So don't get your shorts in a knot over it. I've tried to talk to people about this for years. Some people just get totally fly off the handle with it. Strange that people have become so even to an extent demented talking about it. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't get angry talking about beverages. I mean, I might get excited about it because I'm interested in beverages, but to get angry with somebody? No, nah. that's not a planet I live on. 
nor do I want to live on it. Um, I think this is the fun door, but it's a tough one. It is tough, tough, tough. Mm -mm -mm. Well, it just goes to show you the cheap one can win, and it's winning today. He retracted a message. Okay, uh, I got some wheat IPA. What are you drinking? Uh, I'm drink. I'm tasting brandy. Uh, I think that makes it different because higher alcohol changes the taste. Well, yeah, I mean, it would change the taste. Not all regular beers taste the same. 5% alcohol beers. They're similar, though. Is Applejack an apple brandy? It's an apple brandy. It's not an apple flavored whiskey. And Laird's is the big company that makes it from New Jersey. I've never tried apple brandy. No, I don't have time. I do have time, but I don't, I'm never going to get to it. That's big in Louisiana, Applejack from Laird's in Scobieville, New Jersey. That's big. They got all kinds of varieties, all kinds. But they sell brandy too. Ain't got no problem. I love malt liquor, says Dark Lotus. Malt liquor, always malt liquor. All right. I think this is the Fundador. I sipped them, but. Oh, uh, it is the fun door. I can tell by the dark color. That's the cognac. That's the Martel. Ha ha. I thought I sipped it all. Fun the door. I'm having fun the door. I'm having fun by the door. I'm like Led Zeppelin. I'm going in through the outdoor. All right. I got one hand in my pocket and the other one's flicking a cigarette. Look in a cigarette. I got one hand in my pocket and the other one is making a peace sign. All right, anyway. Um, I would recommend buying both because these are like little adventures, you see. You have little adventures and the Blue Swift was a very nice adventure, but I, I don't think I'd have bought it for 38, tell you the truth, 38. I mean, maybe down the road. Way down the road, ease on down, ease on down the road. You know what I'm saying? Way down the road. If I was going to see the Wiz, you know. But uh, but 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 I didn't have to pay that kind of money because I got such a good price on this small bottle. I don't know. Does that look like enough for a taste challenge? It'll be iffy, iffy, iffy. Hmm. Yeah, it'll make it. But that would be the last one, you know. The Fundador, I didn't know a thing about it. Never saw it in my life. Wasn't looking for it. Didn't care about it. How could I care about it? Didn't know about it. I'm at Savannah Discount. I said, whoa. Brandy Fundador, it was in 2020. You remember way back in 2020? Uh, so I said, well, for $13? Even if it's bad, it'll be good. But it was hardly bad. See why it's been around since 1874. I'd love to try all the varieties, don't you know? All right. Well, thanks for watching. Fundador wins again. 2 and 0. Oh. oh, yeah. The winner. The clear and present winner. Fundador Solara from Spain. Yeah. Spain. Does Spain still have any? Oh, no problem admitting. No. Does Spain still have any overseas territories? Well, not really, except for Suta and Malia in Africa, which is basically two cities surrounded by a little bit of land. That's it. Suta and Malia, you gotta take a ferry to get to them. And they also have the Spanish Canary Islands out there in the Atlantic, off the coast of Africa, the, uh, the Canary Island Islands. France still owns territories all around the world. St. Pierre and Miquelon right off the coast of Newfoundland, two French islands, the last remaining relics of the French North American, New France, New France, uh, French Canada. They own uh, French Guiana in South America. Reunion Island out there in the Indian Ocean. French Polynesia, which is huge out in the Pacific. Mayotte Island out there off the coast of Africa. And uh, 
um, St. Bartholomew Island out in the Caribbean. Well, there's too many to name. So yes, France still has many overseas territories. Oh, well, thanks for watching this video production. Burley says, clinking the mugs, clinking the mugs, clinking the mugs, and Fundador wins. See y'all tomorrow, God willing, with Fundador versus Brandy Saint-Louis of France.